Hi everyone. Um, so I understand I'm the last thing standing between you and the beers. So I'll try to make it entertaining and uh, short as well. So um, we're going to talk about deep fakes today. So what I mean by deep fakes is a lot of things. Um, we can have video, uh, so faces superimposed on a video to make it seem like someone's doing. Uh, or saying something they didn't actually. Well, the <coughs> easier um, easier kind of uh, deep fakes to generate is just static faces. This is a s website called This Person Does Not Exist. Um, you can check it out. Every time you refresh the page, basically you're gonna have uh, one new random face. This is generated with an AI. Um, and I've built a detector to find uh, whether or not those faces are real. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. All right. So I'm Matisse. Uh, I'm French. I work at Coding Game. Um, we had a workshop on Monday. Did anyone attend it? Nice. Thank you. So we played um, Coding Game. We are a website where you you code something to that plays video games for you. Um, and this is to learn programming, get better at algorithms. Our main product at Coding Game is a text screening solution for technical interviews. So basically, you send us your candidates. We test them for you and send you back a detailed report with all their skills and stuff like that. And we try to make it fun by um, evaluating them through games instead of just MCQs or uh, weird uh, tests like um, like you can have somewhere else. All right, so I've talked about those uh, static deepfakes. Here I'm, I'm showing you nine examples of um, deepfakes, so faces generated on thispersondoesnotexist.com, um, except there's actually one real person in there. So I want to uh, demonstrate that actually now AIs have surpassed the human brain on um, many areas, especially uh, kind of this one. We cannot tell those faces apart. So I want to play a little game. Um, who thinks the real person is this one, this little girl on the top left? Okay, number two, this person, top middle. All right, number three. Who thinks number three is real? Okay, a few hands raised. I got scared for a while. Um, number four. Okay, number five. Yeah, this is the one I always get uh, fooled by. Not that one. Uh, number six. Ooh, okay. And number seven. Number eight. And number nine. Okay, so I guess the majority went for that guy on the right. It was actually uh, this one, so the, the guy with the green background. So congratulations to you if you got it. I saw about maybe 20 hands raised, so 20% uh, of people got that right. Which shows that uh, AIs now can fool us very well. This person does not exist.com. It's a demonstrator of uh, an AI called StyleGAN2. It's developed by NVIDIA. We're going to talk a lot about NVIDIA today. Uh, it's completely accidental. It's not sponsored, but um, it's uh, this AI is a neural network. Uh, this particular version generates faces. Um, I can show you they also have uh, variants that are extremely funny such as this cat does not exist. <laughs> yeah. And so those are deepfake cats. Um, and uh, why I decided to do um, some research on that is because it's massively used online to create fake profiles, especially on social media. So it can be e either used for a bot influence, um, political manipulation, misinformation. There's a lot of uh, different use cases for uh, bots and fake social media personas. And uh, basically, faces were the last 
stand that allowed us to distinguish from a real person from a false one. And now well, that barrier has fallen since uh, this kind of AI exists. Um, so how do we fight against that? We have one uh, good thing is that StyleGAN2, so the neural network, it's hard to train. So most people will not go through the trouble of training their own at home just to have like their uh, hundred uh, profiles have their homemade pictures. But uh, so they're going to use, most of them are going to use this person does not exist. And that's something uh, I see a lot now that I have a detector. And so basically if we manage to hack that website, um, it means that we can detect whether or not a profile is legitimate or not. Um, but this entire story is more of an excuse to teach you about some basic machine learning concepts, especially how neural networks uh, work, how what is a GAN and how it works, how we train that. Um, so here I'm going to do a quick crash course, something that in university would take you six months. Here we are going to take maybe 10, 20 minutes to go through that. So there's going to be a lot of simplification, but hopefully at the end, you will have the general gist of how a GAN works. Um, <clears throat> so, a neural network, you often see this uh, picture at the bottom to represent that. Actually, a neural network, it, it sounds super complicated. Actually, it's just a sequence of uh, multiplications and additions uh, that combine numbers on the left and create numbers to the right, and that's basically the input and the output. The way we uh, adjust those additions and multiplications to create the result we want, it's a bit more complex, of course. Uh, it's called training. And there's a lot of different ways to do training. But most of the time, in, um, in machine learning, we are going to have, for neural networks, a lot of examples to train that neural network. A few examples to um, this kind of uh, AI applications, so neural networks. They can be used to find a plant species name from just a picture. If you have an iPhone or an Android, you install the app called PlantNet. It's amazing. You just snap a picture of any plant you want, and it gives you its name and Wikipedia page. Um, and this is based on neural networks. Another application could be evaluating car damage from a video. That's something I work for a customer in the insurance world. Well, well are they don't want to deploy an expert for every case uh, and just do some pre-assessment. And it's also very efficient for visual and video processing. Um, a third application would be when determining when someone in an audio stream says those two words, which I'm not going to tell for the sake of uh, your phones. And uh, also another project I worked on where uh, neural networks worked especially well was uh, to detecting compromise and uh, suspicious behavior from logs. So we have a lot of things. Basically, um, you have to remember that a neural network, um, its main principle is to be trained on a very, very specific task. So th that kind of task. GANs, on the other hand, they are, um, they are a specific uh, specificity of uh, neural networks, so they are a type of neural networks. Um, they have been invented later, so first paper came out in 2014, and it's been a very trendy topic since then. Um, they are used for all the applications um, related to generating stuff, so generating faces, for example. It's, uh, it's sometimes a GAN behind that. More recently, you've seen, uh, for example, DALI, stable diffusion, stuff like that. It's not a GAN. We are transitioning away from that fad. Um, those are called uh, guided diffusion models. But uh, GANs are pretty easy to understand, actually. We have two networks. Um, the generator, the discriminator, which both have a very specific role and they are going to be trained together. The generator is what we see on this person doesn't exist.com. It's um, a network we provide as an input, we provide just random numbers. Remember, a neural, networks, uh, a neural network is a series of 
plus and multiplications. So um, if we want something to generate various outputs, we have to as well provide various inputs. So we do that by providing random number. Um, we, we provide entropy and that's how it gets its creativity. But um, its goal is to generate images as an output. So actually there's not uh, three inputs and only two outputs. There's like 512 inputs and the outputs is the number of pixels in your image times three because there's R, G and B. And that creates your image. So we want our generator to generate realistic faces. To do that, we use another network, which is called the discriminator. The discriminator, we give it an image on the left, so as an input. It's either a real face or a face that was generated by the generator. And the discriminator, its only job is to tell whether or not it's a real person. So basically what I had you do at the beginning of this talk. To train those, we have uh, this experiment set up. Um, we pick either a real image or a fake image generated by uh, the other network, and we give it to the discriminator. If the discriminator gets the answer right, so if it, it finds uh, correctly that either it was a real or a deep fake, um, we reinforce the behavior of the discriminator. So it's, um, it's a bit complicated how it's done exactly, but basically we uh, reward that network for doing the right thing. And if the discriminator gets it wrong, well, we tell the generator, good job, you managed to fool the discriminator, so um, do that more often, and it will do that more often. So in each kind of game, we are going to play a lot and a lot of games. Um, in each of those uh, games, only one of those networks wins, and um, they will try to get better than the other one. And so, by training and just getting a small edge over the other one, over time, they will both get better together. Um, so I was mentioning difficulties for training that kind of network. Uh, kind of pair of networks, actually. Um, the first one is overfitting, because uh, that's a very real issue in machine learning, is that basically one of your two networks will learn exactly by heart one, uh, the, um, the input data set. And so well, if your discriminator manages to know all of the images of your training set, now you can't fool it anymore. Because, well, if that's an image it knows, it means that it's a real picture, otherwise it means that it's made by the generator. Another issue is the slow convergence of um, the networks. Um, because you, it's, it's not obvious at first, but the, the role of ge the generator is to make uh, deepfakes, make realistic faces that look like the real data set. But actually, we never show it a single real image. It only does guessing. It guesses, and if it gets it about right, if the output kind of looks like a face, we reinforce that, but at the beginning, the output of the generator is complete garbage, it's just noise, and the discriminator, same, it's just giving yes and no, and by just uh, guesswork, uh, trying uh, trial and error from the generator, it will uh, learn what is expected from it. Um, going along with slow convergence is, of course, computing power because it takes a lot of energy to train um, a neural network. And the longer you have it, the more computing power you will need. So it means uh, expensive GPUs and a lot of uh, electricity to do that. Yes, by the way, uh, neural networks, if you didn't know, are mostly trained on GPUs which are better at doing parallel operations. Um, and there's the last uh, issue with uh, uh, GANs, which is mode collapse. Mode collapse is a bit complicated, but it's uh, basically the generator will learn one output. I it will always output the same thing, regardless of the random numbers we provide it. And uh, it will find one thing that fools the discriminator 100% of the time. Once the discriminator catches up, 
it will change slightly and find one new face that fools it. Uh, but basically, your generator is pretty much useless because it will just generate one face over and over. So there are ways to overcome that, but um, research on GANs is still ongoing and it's uh, quite a tough topic. Okay, so what if we want to detect GAN-generated images? So basically, we have images that come from a generator. What if we want to um, detect whether or not they are real. So basically we are doing the job of the discriminator. Well, we could use uh, the pre-trained style GAN discriminator, which is available open source uh, from NVIDIA's repos. We could also train our own, um, some sort of neural network or maybe uh, rules that uh, detect magically that kind of thing. But actually, if we manage to uh, build a discriminator that was better than a 50-50 chance, it means that we have surpassed the performance of Stalgan's own discriminator. And, well, I um, don't believe I myself uh, would have uh, better perf performance in a classification than the whole team at NVIDIA working on that for months. So we can scrap those two options. Um, we can consider that we cannot make a discriminator. But uh, you remember GANs are based on a game, a generator, between, uh, generator and discriminator, so we're going to cheat. We have two ways to cheat. Either we find a bug in the game rules, or we reverse engineer how that GAN works. And I'm going to show you two techniques, so one for each. Um, let's play another game. Now you have only two faces, it's only a 50-50 chance. You, you should be much better at that. So, I'm going to ask you which face is real. Do you think it's the left one? Okay. Who thinks it's the right one? Okay, so <clears throat> now we have a clear majority on the left. And if you know about uh, this person, does not exist.com, um, the left one is pretty obviously doesn't come from that website. Because, um, well, there's a detailed background. Uh, buildings like that, they kind of never happen in that, especially with that level of sharpness on the edges. Um, usually it's more blurry. Um, the pose, the sunglasses, those are things that really don't happen often in uh, in, in this person does not exist. As well, we have the aspect ratio. So here it's a rectangle on the left and uh, static deepfakes from that uh, website are always squared. So there's a lot of indicators. One very prominent one is uh, coming from something called the FFHQ dataset. So Flickr faces high quality. It's the dataset that's been used to train that network. Uh, so those are real people on the right which have been used to train um, uh, StyleGAN2. Um, those have been extracted fl from Flickr, uh, its Creative Commons uh, images that have been downloaded. I even saw Mark Zuckerberg in those once, uh, and there's around 70,000 people. So you can consider that your static deepfakes from that website are actually 170,000th Mark Zuckerberg, which is kind of nice. But uh, you may have noticed something in that video. Let me give you a hint. Sorry for the cursed visual, it's uh, the best way I found. So now you can see those are real people, but actually the faces, they have been cropped so that the eyes are always in the same position. It's been uh, made by that research team that uh, made the data set so that there's one particularity which makes uh, easier to train. And that's one thing we can exploit because StyleGAN, when we are training it on that data set, is going to try to reproduce because it, it re really it's only reference about what a human face looks like is those pictures and the eyes are always in the same spot. So um, I can show you again. Oh yeah, it's we're on the cat. Okay, so now remember, uh, I'll put my mouse on the one of the eyes. You can see those deepfakes always have the eyes in the same place. So um, if you come across a social media profile um, that looks a bit spammy with a face 
uh, that looks a bit weird, check the position of the eye. It's a strong predetector for that kind of uh, indication. It doesn't always mean that your, uh, um, the person you're interacting with is fake, because either uh, it's a real person with bad luck and they put their eyes at that place. Um, I invite you to check on Twitter or Facebook. It's actually quite rare that people will, will have their eyes at that place. Uh, pict uh, profile pictures are usually uh, way less zoomed. And also, well, you can have the other way, which is um, the person is aware of, uh, well, the, the scammer or uh, the, the owner of the bot is aware of uh, that specificity of the eye, and which, which is quite known, actually, and just crops the picture to move the eyes uh, a bit further away from those uh, positions. So you can never be too sure, but uh, usually that's a strong indicator. Now I want to go through um, the other technique, which will give us more like 100% accuracy. OK, um, well, sorry, this is Python code. I hope your eyes are not uh, burning too much. But uh, this is a small script I wrote. Um, it downloads in a loop the picture from this person does not exist, and it prints out the hash, the beginning of the hash on the right. And you can see that sometimes there's a few duplicates. So here, the second and third line are actually the same hash, so which means that the server sent us twice the same picture. Uh, same happens a bit below. We have three times the hash. And actually, when you do that with a lot of threads and things like that, you realize that um, each picture is about the same for more than a, a bit more than a second. Um, there, um, so I repeated the experiment across several uh, IPs, uh, geozones, and stuff like that, and the image is always the same. Um, it means that actually the server has a cache with a single image in it, uh, which refreshes every second or so, and that image is the one that's being served to everybody in the world. Um, that means that, um, well, if uh, I were crazy enough to download all those images, I have a database of all the images that have been generated by that website. And if I come across a suspicious profile picture, I can just match it against my database to make sure uh, it was generated actually from there. So um, what I did was basically I have this downloader script that you just saw. It's a bit more complex, but pretty much it's 10 liners of Python. We have 50 images per minute coming in. I run th several threads to make sure I, I don't miss any, so it's more like 200 images a minute, but uh, there's also deduplication, of course. And on a disk, I store all these images. Whenever I have a suspicious profile picture, um, I can just run it through a script that maybe does a match uh, on that server, so I'll get into that, how it works. Um, I didn't want to use a uh, hash, uh, so I didn't want to use like SHA-1 or MD5, because actually on social media, the picture is uh, compressed slightly, so the hash will change. So we have to do a visual match. So basically take all the pictures, scan it, and find if it's similar enough. Um, actually, that sounds good, but it's not feasible in reality with uh, my resources. Hence the $100 you see in the title of the conference. Um, so we have around 72,000 images a day, 450 kilobytes per image, which means uh, I have 11 terabytes of data per year coming in that I have to index. And similarly, when I want to search for a picture, I have to do a visual match on every single one of those uh, 11 terabytes times the number of years the script has been running. So uh, that's not really feasible on uh, the kind of hardware I do have, which is this thing on the right. Anyone knows uh, what's the name of this thing? Yeah, it's a, it's a Jetson Nano, so it's kind of a Raspberry Pi. It's pretty much the same specs, but we have a GPU on top. Um, and you can see with 256 gigs of uh, hard drive, we aren't going to go far uh, if we store everything uh, as is. 
So um, we have GPU, so why not leverage the power of neural networks? I have used to do that um, sort of compression, I've used FaceNet. FaceNet, it's a super powerful neural network that you give it a picture of a face and it will give you a hash, a sort of, um, so it's called an embedding, but it's basically a visual hash in that case. Uh, which means that if you provided two different pi two different pictures of the same person, regardless of the pose, the they are taken a few years apart, so there's like maybe a beard, uh, the clothes have changed. If the person is the same, the embeddings will be very similar, almost uh, identical. And uh, two different people, even even if they have the same background, the same smile, they will uh, get classified far apart. So basically, yeah, that's a hash of your face. Uh, one of those embeddings, one of those hashes is only two kilobytes. So uh, we have a very strong disk reduction. And also since we have GPU and that's a neural network, we, have, um, we can leverage the performance to compute them very fast. So they come in at a rate of about one every second. We can easily index that, uh, compute one hash per second on uh, GPU. Um, to do the lookup, the, the indexing and the lookup of those hashes, it's not exact matching because, well, you're not indexing hashes and uh, trying to do an, an exact match with an index. You will have to do some sort of fuzzy search. Um, and for that, I'm using Elasticsearch Open Distro, which has searched for uh, something called KNN search. It's uh, K nearest neighbors of a uh, uh, vector. So it will give us the, like the three vectors that are the most similar to the one we are querying. Um, so now the setup of um, the tool is pretty much the same. We, uh, instead of just storing the pictures with our script, we are passing them through FaceNet um, to compute their embedding. I'm also, so I'll show you that in a second, but I'm also storing a very compressed version of the image, uh, and you'll see why in a second. Um, and when, when we have a suspicious profile picture, now instead of running a linear search on all the pictures we have in the index, we can just run the Elasticsearch query to find uh, which uh, are the closest faces and see if we have a positive match in our index. So, um, First, uh, for bonus points, we well this uh, technique. If your uh, opponent, so if uh, the the person with the the fake account um, is using evasion techniques, so for example, flipping the image, rotating that, uh, adding some noise, it's fine because FaceNet will go beyond that and find pretty much the same hash. So uh, the matching will still be very good. Second bonus point is that. Since every image is only displayed by the server 1.2 seconds in the entire uh, world and in the entire life of uh, the website, it means that if we find a positive match, we can also find out exactly when that image was generated. It's kind of useful if you have, for example, five, 10 profiles that you suspect might uh, belong to the same person, but uh, the registration dates don't match, the emails don't match, you can always uh, perform a check to see, yeah, well, I see those, all those profile pictures have been made like in the same five minutes. So I guess that's a strong indicator as well. Okay, so um, it's demo time. Um, and also it's probably demo effect time because this uh, tool is, well, you, you will see, but uh, sometimes it doesn't work. So please don't judge me too harshly. And if it does, uh, please thank it because, uh, well, you can see, yeah, this, it's not an error, it's working. I'm not a front-end developer, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm all about functionality, you know? Uh, so we have uh, currently 16 million faces in the Elasticsearch database. Um, so you understand that on a very small computer, uh, so basically Raspberry Pi, uh, we can now run a facial recognition database that's the size of a small country. Well, I'm, I'm not sure how many people are in Belgium, actually, I don't want to insult. Um, 
the indexing is almost in real time, so we are arguing. Yeah, let's let's take this phase. I'm going to download the picture. You can see my downloads folder is full of them because I'm testing hard. Okay. And now let's upload. So now it's uh, calculating the hash of the face, and it's looking it up in the Elastic Search uh, in in the Elastic Search index. Yes. Okay. So uh, we have our top three matches. Um, on the left, you can see it's what's in the index. Um, that's why what I was saying. I'm storing a very compressed version of the face. Um, you can see actually on the left it's super blurry, but uh, the image on the right is the actual one that I just uploaded. It's uh, almost 500 kilobytes. The one on the left it's 4 kilobytes, but it's super helpful to uh, do a visual matching, a visual confirmation, instead of just uh, the tool saying, yeah, you have a 100% match or 95.5, which doesn't really mean anything if you don't have confidence in the, in the tool. Um, also, as a, as a bonus, yeah, I, I also included that, oh, we have a perfect eye position here. So this is the picture we just uploaded. Just in case um, the script wasn't running at the time the picture was generated, well, we can still do this pre-confirmation with the, with the eye position. All right, so we have... Um, 15 million faces uh, indexed. I'd say, let me, let me correct that, maybe 20 seconds? How, I'm not sure how long it took. Um, yeah, sub 20 second search. Uh, usually it's more like sub one second, but uh, sometimes it's a bit slower. You can find it uh, online. Uh, don't forget to include HTTPS because uh, I'm bad with SSL certificates and stuff, so there's no automatic redirect from HTTP. Um, also, yes, it's in my living room in Paris, so please don't melt it. Uh, I'm going back tonight, so if I find no apartment left, uh, I will be sad. And the tool is also open source, of course, if you want to check it out to see how it's made. And even if you want to run your own instance, uh, just in case mine breaks like it does all the time. All right, so uh, to finish, um, I gave you a good discriminator, so remember the terms of GANs, generators, discriminators. So I gave you a good way of detecting deepfakes. Now I'm going to give you a good way of generating them. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, don't scan that uh, QR code, it's a bit buggy. Um, StyleGAN2 is uh, hard to train, I, m I mentioned, but uh, I also mentioned you can download it from NVIDIA's GitHub account. And uh, you can run your own, um, your own instance of the neural network. So here, that's a notebook I have. Oh, yeah. uh, I've been fighting a lot with uh, Google Colab. If someone uh, from Google Cloud is in the room, uh, thank you for this tool, but it's been a pain in the ass recently. Um, so yes, we, we can download the thing. It's uh, right here, so we git clone uh, from this repo. Then we instantiate a, bun a bunch of uh, stuff on uh, TensorFlow, so which is a machine learning a neural network library in Python. Um, and then we can generate faces however we want. So this is not live, so um, I cannot generate a new one to show you, but uh, basically you just have a seed here that you can, uh, you can change and it will change the, the face. So it uh, generates a new vector to input to the generator network that's uh, pre-trained, and you can generate faces however you want. And since those faces don't come from this person does not exist, it will evade detection by my own tool. So here, well, I'm kind of uh, giving you something to beat me, but uh, that's what you get from uh, being here. That's your reward. Um, also, we have uh, something very uh, interesting. It's uh, it comes from. Sorry, yeah. It comes from the fact that uh, neural networks have a nice property called continuity. So it's a mathematical property, which means that uh, your function, the input, if if the inputs change very slightly, the output will also change not much, and this means that the random vector that we feed 
to the generator network to give it its kind of creativity. If we change the values just a bit, it will give us um, faces that look the same. And so now you can generate the same face with several variants. Um, so this guy on the right is a bit older, uh, the smile is, is different, the pose as well, it's one profile or the other. So um, now you can pretend to be a real person and have like change your profile pictures from time to time. You can also, I I oftentimes it adds glasses for example or change the clothes. So here you can see it's more gray in the middle, the, the shirt. So um, with this you can generate several variants by just changing slightly the, um, the input vector. Thank you so much. Um, this was a pleasure being here. So we have around 15 minutes for questions. I'll be around for a few minutes as well after the talk, but I got to leave uh, very fast because I have a train tonight. And also just one last thing. Uh, don't forget to rate the talk on uh, the DevOps website or application. It really helps. Um, thank you. Okay, so for the questions, uh, make sure you yell and then I'll repeat the question for everyone and follow the camera. Uh, the same generator for video. Um, StyleGAN, I know it's not doing video, but uh, with the advances of, uh, uh, so, um, DALI and uh, Stable Diffusion. I, I've seen one recently, I think it's been, it's made by Facebook Research where it's still in closed beta. Um, so you cannot generate faces that animate uh, right now. Well, there's ways to do that, like um, um, doing a video deepfake with your face and uh, embedding one of someone else's face. But uh, yeah, that's something that's coming up. Video, um, video AIs are, I think, the next big thing in uh, we're going to see explode in 2023. Yes, oh yes, uh, you. Okay, so the question was, is there a way to reverse engineer, um, so from an image, get the input vector that was given to the generator? There's some research ongoing for that. Uh, actually, some neural networks have pretty strong signatures on that kind of stuff. So full reversal is not possible. Um, right now, th but there's research ongoing. And uh, um, so no, we cannot perfectly know for sure if uh, an image, an arbitrary image comes from a given network, uh, unless you're in some very specific cases. Okay, anyone else? Yes? Yes, so uh, it's a remark about if um, the image doesn't come from that specific website, uh, my tool won't work. Yes, exactly. So um, that's, that's actually why I gave you this way of generating uh, images yourself. Um, because if it doesn't come from that specific website, I don't have it in the database, so it doesn't work. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the big pitfall of that tool. But anyway, um, a lot of people are still using this person doesn't exist for uh, their fake accounts. Now I think we are going to see a transition towards, uh, well, uh, DALI and uh, stable diffusion and uh, uh, all that kind of uh, great, great stuff that are coming up. Anyone else? Yeah, well, I guess I'll let you enjoy the beer now. Uh, and thank you so much for coming.